Our project is on the Islamic State, and it's by Heather Toomey and Clarissa Cow. The origin of ISIS um, is that it has changed names over time. Uh, when a U.S. strike killed Al Qaeda, uh, the Al Qaeda leader Al Zarqawi in early June of 2006, Abu Ayyub al Masri, as al -Mas -Masri took over Al Qaeda and formed an Islamic State of Iraq called ISI. The next leader renamed the group to the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant, which was called ISIL. In February of 2014, Al Qaeda renounced ties to ISIL, making it an independent group. The Islamic State has and continues to evolve over time. For example, it has gone through the following names in order. In 2006, when it was part of Al Qaeda, it was called the Islamic State of Iraq. In 2013, it was called the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant. And in 2014, they changed their name to the Islamic State. Mostly, they started to, in order to attempt to create a caliphate, which is a country in which Islamic law, Islamic law is the law and stands as the only law. Although the Islamic State has more than 36 leaders, so they can't all be listed here, its main and most well-known leader is Abu Qaqir al-Baghdadi, who was also called Abu Duwa. Once ISIS made him their leader, however, he changed his name to Khalifa Ibrahim. According to CNN Politics, ISIS makes one to two million dollars every day from oil and gas sales, extortion and taxation, external donations, kidnapping for ransom, and previously bank looting, and also by selling illegally obtained artifacts. That is, on average, 365 million or 730 million dollars per year. However, the U.S. recently bombed some of ISIS's cash storage, so exactly how much money they have now is uncertain. ISIS follows the Sharia law of the 18th century. They believe that all non-Muslims should die, and, want to f and they want to form a huge nation called a caliphate, where Muslim law is the law. They do not fully follow the Quran, which, is, which we know because ISIS burns people, which is forbidden by the Quran. In the USA, ISIS has bombed uh, people multiple times throughout the years, there, such as with the bombing at, at the Boston Marathon in April 2013. They also bombed Paris in, in new, November 2015, Shot, uh, did a shooting at Curtis Colwell, Cent Curtis Colwell Center in May 2015, had someone attack with a knife at the University of California, Merced in November 2015, shot at San Barn Barnardino, Barnardino in on December 2nd, 2015, uh, made, did a shooting at Phila uh, uh, Philadelphia police officers in January 2016, shot at, or, or, at an Orlando nightclub in June 2016, and had another person attacked with a knife at Ohio State University in November 2016. ISIS uses many weapons. One of their most powerful weapons is social media, which they use to spread fear and gain support. Of course, it's transported over the internet. They use Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and other social media networks. Symptoms of exposure are sadness, anger, curiosity, a desire to join ISIS, and sometimes laughter. Um, an example of this would be when they had a social media event where they had followers who had cats pose their cats with guns and grenades, which was surprisingly funny, but kind of sad that someone so evil can be funny. Um, possible cures that have been implemented are that social media sites are actively monitoring content to remove anything that supports ISIS. Some hackers have even t gone to ISIS recruitment sites in the deep dark web and replaced the sites with ads for depression medicine. ISIS also uses knives, guns, bombs, planes, drones, armored fighting vehicles, and towed artillery. These weapons are used to find and hurt people. 
Many are handheld, others are transported by cars or are transportation vehicles on their own. They use dozens of kinds of guns, two kinds of planes, two kinds of drones, 16 kinds of armored vehicles, and eight kinds of towed out artillery. Symptoms of exposure include death, loss of limbs, post-traumatic stress disorder, pain, and fear. Possible cures include bombing them, prosthetic limbs, counseling, hospital care, and faithful prayer. Some of the effects of terrorism are that in the past, people could go and meet their family members at the terminal as soon as they got off the plane, but now they won't even let you go past to that point unless you've gone through security, which you have to have a ticket, an ID, and they have to like scan you to make sure you don't have any weapons on you. And this is because terrorists have used the system that allowed them to go to the terminal to bomb people at the airport. Another effect is that people can't, won't, some people won't go to big events such as marathons or big weddings unless there's lots of security because ISIS in the past has bombed lots of those places. Lastly, in the past, we all had lots of privacy. Nobody was tracking our calls or, uh, I don't know, we didn't have any worries of people watching us so much, or at least not the government watching us. And because of terrorism, the U.S. has passed the Patriot Act, which allows them to listen to calls and more without a warrant. This is so that they can track terrorists, since in the past, terrorists have used things like, like phone calls and other mediums to plan secret attacks. And these are the wonderful words that we give credit to for much of our, much and or all of our information. So thank you. I hope you learned a lot about ISIS. Bye.